Hello everyone, it's March 13th, 2018. It's Tuesday, it's Harp Tuesday. And in this, this episode today, I'm gonna do something that a viewer, viewer requested, and that is talk about playing lever harp in an orchestra. And in particular, looking at adapting Rimsky-Korsakov's Capriccio Espanol for the lever harp. And certainly in North America, at least, I think this is something that happens where maybe you have a high school orchestra, there's a harp part, and somebody in the orchestra plays the harp, maybe in addition to another instrument but doesn't have a pedal harp and just has a lever harp and, and sometimes it can be maybe easy to adapt, but sometimes it can be a bit of a challenge. So I just wanna give you some suggestions and thoughts in terms of adapting music that of course would have been written for a pedal harp. So two things I think to keep in mind. One is that we really have to become arrangers, right? We really have to, it is a goal, right? Is a goal, uh, the purist in me of course would say, try to play every note that the composer wrote. But the thing is, the harp is in many ways a misunderstood instrument, or it's not, not all composers know how to write well for the harp. So even when you're playing a pedal harp, there are times when you actually might have to adapt something that the composer wrote. Maybe it's actually literally impossible, or sometimes, especially given constraints of time, or maybe to try and get across what seems to be the intent rather than what's literally written, we might change things. One of the most famous examples I think would be the Tchaikovsky uh, Nutcracker cadenza from, from the Waltz of the Flowers, right? Which... etc. Great cadenza, right? Very recognizable. Well, in fact, Tchaikovsky wrote it Something like that, where both hands are playing at the same time in counter, uh, counter, counter motion, right? One going up, one going down. And it just doesn't work particularly well on the harp, and it does, certainly doesn't get this flowing quality that we get by going. And that's the case where almost everybody plays it this way. Another classic example might be with arpeggios where maybe you run across some arpeggios that are say in groups of nine. What about if we have some upwards arpeggios in a row where the composer wrote nine notes, so maybe, but they keep going. Maybe even slightly faster. So we could try to learn that bouncing back and forth. If we have to go down too low, it's a big challenge for the left hand, for the right hand to find some of these. So maybe we even have to go three, one, two, one, two, one, two, to end up with a right, you know, finishing with the right hand, going down with the left hand. So it's going to be very tempting to instead go. Four, three, two, one, four, three, two, one, just suits the instrument so much better and. Uh, again, even when you're playing a, a pedal harp, you're going to have to sometimes make these choices. So depending, again, are you, were you just handed the music and the first rehearsal is tomorrow? Or do you have six months to work on this? Is this a piece, are you an aspiring orchestral harpist and this is a piece that's uh, a typical um, audition repertoire? Of course, you're gonna probably wanna try to learn every note. And again, if, if this is something you have to learn at the last minute, maybe you'd, you'd simplify those and do groups of eight instead of groups of nine. So especially when we get to the lever harp, we're going to have to be an arranger and have to take what the composer wrote and sometimes adapt it quite a bit or leave out a bunch of stuff just to make it playable. So just being aware that, that that's okay, that we're, that we're gonna have to do that, right? Um, the other thing I think we really wanna be aware of is anharmonic spelling. So I've got my, my old, MIDI keyboard here because I think this is going to be a little bit easier to explain if we have a keyboard. So there are many ways to write the same tone, the same pitch. So for example, C natural could be written as D double flat. But typically there would be two, there are often two common spellings of the same sound. So for example, um, and let's see, this is a little bit 
deceptive because now I'm upside down. How can I do this so that... Hmm. Let's try it this way. So maybe, hopefully you can still see and hear me. Um, here's, here's, here's a C. Hmm. Less than ideal, I think. Uh, let's try that. So, yeah, there we go. Okay. Here's a C, this note right here. Now, if we see it, it written as a C flat, that's one down, that's the, also a B natural, right? A much more common way of, of writing that same sound would be a B natural. Or let's say we're playing a C sharp. This one right here was C sharp. Well, it's also a D flat, right? So th this black note here, right? would commonly either be written as a D flat or a C sharp. And on the piano, it doesn't really matter, right? It's an aesthetic thing and maybe makes more sense musically, but in terms of the physicality of what we do when we see that note, if it's written as a uh, C sharp or a D flat, we do the same thing, right? We play the same note. And that's true for most instruments. On the harp, it really matters, right? Because, um, well, for example, uh, Let's actually use a, a D sharp or an E flat. Same sound, right? Just different enharmonic spellings of the same sound, the same pitch, but different lever setting, D sharp up and different string or E flat down and the E string. So it really matters on the harp. And when we look through stuff, especially when we're trying to play stuff on the lever harp that was intended for the pedal harp, we want to just be aware of enharmonic spellings that sometimes maybe we can do something and play, they have say a G sharp, but we'll play a A flat instead just because of what we've, what else we've got going on. So really being aware of that. So let's look at this Capriccio Espanol. Now you can download the harp part from IMSLP. If you look at the description, the video description in YouTube, there'll be a link down there. You can go and check that out and follow along. Kind of handy. Um, so it starts, oh, well, it starts, Tip, like a typical harp piece where we get to just sit and and not play anything for the first two movements. Um, but the third movement, here we are in the key of B flat. So, sorry, let me get these down. And again, if I were doing this, I might be aware of, uh, in this case, I don't think I need to do anything lower than this B so I could leave some of these set potentially for what's coming up later. But this little, not a problem. That's fine. just did the single C sharp, then play the right hand chord as written, move down. Could we try and go and move both of these up? Doesn't really feel worth it to me. Um, so again, there's a first example of we're going to be editors, we're going to be arrangers and decide, okay, this is what we're going to be able to get of what's written. So on the, on the whole, right? This whole section, this whole movement is, is actually quite easy. Then we get to the fourth movement, which starts with a bunch of different instruments doing cadenzas and actually ends with a harp doing a cadenza. And this was specifically what uh, a viewer had asked about. So um, let's get the right uh, lever setting. So now we're in the key of F, but we're also going to put our C's up and as well as talk about something else in a moment. So the cadenza is kind of two parts. It starts with this big run around on, on an A arpeggio. So we get this big chord and right away, for me, I can find all the four of those notes in my right hand, but you might not be able to. And again, this is, this is kind of where you're gonna to have to think about 
what your goal is potentially. Um, so we could try and play all those notes just by jumping up there with left hand. We could also go leave out that E, right? And try to decide which sounds best, uh, which or potentially maybe something is a good challenge to work on. How much time do you have to work on this? And is this, again, are you are you an aspiring orchestral harpist? Or are you somebody who just happens to be playing harp in the orchestra and, and primarily you want this to sound good because that's, that's what the audience is going to care about, right? Does this sound good? Anyway, we get this opening. And then as written, and I can actually do this part of the, the cadenza as written. Now, of course, you might not have that low A. Potentially, you might not even have that top A. I think most, most harps might. Again, a 34 string or 36 string harp will have this top A, and it's kind of handy. But let's look at some options if we didn't. So maybe we just repeat this A, or we could do that, but I'm not sure we want the E on the bottom. cut that a little bit short, right? Instead of going all the way up, we just... And if our harp happens to end, say, on this G, maybe we've got 33 strings. We don't have that top A. Ah! We can just go... End it a little bit earlier. And again, this is a spot where maybe we look at the intention of kind of this, this A chord, right? A's and E's are all that we're playing. And messing around with it, maybe gradually getting a little bit more intense. Um, this is also an example where it's not the best writing for the harp because this repeated where we're going right back to strings that we just played is something that's challenging on the harp because they're still ringing, right? So in order not to go not to buzz or to hear them get stopped, we have to wait until the last minute Actually really quite hard. It takes all, many years of, of, of practice to be able to just get in position and then at the last minute drop down that last little bit and immediately play. Something that could make this sound potentially better and feel easier would be just to move say the right hand up one inversion as it were, right? So instead of coming right back maybe we go so A E A but then E A E a E. So this E, we're no longer turning around on a note that we've just played. Mm. Uh, messing around with something like that, right? And I and I, I know harpists who do do some slightly different fingering or slightly different notes on this. On the pedal harp, we'll have the F flat, which we'll talk about in a moment, so you can even avoid. Sorry. Uh, even avoid fighting over that E, because one hand can play an F flat and one can play the E natural. So, again, a spot where you might think it's a cadenza. You don't have to worry about fitting in with orchestra. You're all on your own here, and maybe trying, potentially, if, especially if you miss some of these strings, trying to get the intention of, of this kind of. You know, maybe we leave out some of these notes. Potentially doing what you need to. Obviously, again, I would prefer to do what's written, and certainly we can if we have this low A, and we can basically do what's written even if we don't have that low A. Okay, so then we get to cadenza. So we, we, we finish this... Uh... Uh, sorry, I said cadenza, I meant gliss. We have this big gliss. Now here, this gliss, on the pedal harp, what we're going to do, right, and you can see in the scale that it gives you as you go up, as well as being in the key of F, we have a C sharp, we have a D flat, and we have an F flat. 
If your harp is tuned in E flat, like mine is right now, we can't get either the D flat or the F flat. And notice, right, D flat and C sharp, if we, if we check our keyboard, they're the same note, the same pitch. So essentially what we're doing by putting the Ds to flat and the Cs to sharp is we're making, in this case, I would say the D disappear. We're having two strings make the same sound. E flat, uh, F flat and E natural are also the same sound. So again, I think we're getting rid of the F string. Um, now, what could we do on the lever harp? Well, one option, if we're tuned to E flat, is just do it. Do it like that. It doesn't sound great. And actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to my pedal harp. All right, a quick switch to the pedal harp. Just to give you an idea of what it sounds like, what this gliss is sounds like as written. Uh, so, we've, you know, we've got... Uh... in right after us. Um, so that's how it sounds as written. And as I say, that includes this D flat, which we could get absolutely right by retuning and the F flat, which I think, I don't think we want to retune that because we need some F sharps, right? And if we retune it to F flat when it's down, then we can get F natural, but no F sharps. So suppose we retune our Ds to D flat when they're down, right? Then we can get this sound. So here's, here's, this, here's the original sound. If we have an F natural in there instead of an F flat, F flat again, F natural, and finally here's what it sounds like with a D natural as well. So we could, you know, it's a big splash of color. We could do it with that D flat, uh, sorry, D natural and F and F natural. But you can hear how, or much more satisfying the, the second way, the way is written. Okay, so we're back on the on the lever harp. So there you heard those 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 three sounds, right? The to do it just as we could in E flat, to do it with by retuning our Ds down to flat when they're down, right? So when the key of A flat, when everything's down. Um, or by having that G, uh, sorry, the F flat as well. Now, I don't really think we want to retune our Fs, right? So what could we do? I, ha I don't want to, uh, for, for, this, for this episode, I, I didn't want to retune my Ds because it takes a while for them to stay in tune. Then it's going to, when you bring them back to natural, it's uh, going to mess them up anyway. But what I want to show you is an option that's possible on the lever harp, and that is to actually stop some, you know, it's possible on the pedal harp as well, is to stop some of the strings. So again, the purpose of some of these pedal settings, right, these enharmonics, is actually to get rid of, in this case, let's say the F string. So again, maybe we tune our Ds to D flat when they're down, so we got that, and then maybe we hold the Fs down. So you're going to hear it with the Ds is natural, but this now, Do we like that better then? Actually, I think I'll demonstrate that. Again, one of the options we do have is to hold some of the strings that we that we can't change on the lever harp so that we could, let's say we retune our Ds and we hold the Fs and try to stay within that region for the most part. So we don't have an F flat, which is E natural, but we just have an F natural, but we're stopping them so they're not getting, they're not getting um, played as we gliss. So, right? So that's the same sound, apart from this F down here, which we can't really stop. It's the same sound. So a useful thing to be aware of. Back here on the lover harp. So again, that gives you some possibilities uh, to think about in terms of, do you want to retune? And then maybe stopping some of the strings is, a, is an option to try and get as close as possible to what it would sound like on a pedal harp. Um, then we go ahead, we've got this little section. Again, maybe we don't have to play that low A, we can just play or We have a 
G sharp here, or an A flat, right? Same sound. Well, we've just been playing A's and we've just been playing G's. So I think we'll just leave it out, right? Just the top two notes. Again, you, or a uh, slightly different ending, but anyway, um, we have to be arrangers. We have to make some make some cuts and make some choices. Um, then we get six bars to change things up a little bit, right? We're still kind of in, in F, but uh, we're going to have an E flat, right? And get rid of these C's. Uh, and we're going to have an F sharp. So the key signature is still F, but we're actually changing things up a bit. Um, we don't have that low A, no problem. We'll just do two A's in a row. Or, maybe we like that. Or we could do, we could do a D, right? We're playing a D inversion in the right hand. Or, I'm oh, sorry. Sorry, uh, we could experiment, right, with, with what is going to sound best. Um, let's try the D. Could we set this C sharp? Well, we've been playing it earlier. Let's not. Let's just play top two notes. Great, that works out okay. So again, we have to make a choice. We could just do... But it's kind of nice to hear that back and forth. Mm. Kind of like that D is an option. Then we get another spot that sounds great on the pedal harp, and I'll cut to a quick clip of that. One more quick pedal harp uh, interlude. Yeah, I just want you to hear what this section sounds like as written. Um... <laughs> Uh, so it sounds, sounds pretty good that way, but there are some options we can do on the lever harp. What can we do on the lever harp? So again, let's look at, uh, I don't know if it's clear, but what we want is, um, okay, so we want A naturals, we want uh, B natural, let's do this region here, C flat, okay, we can't, we can't get that, and C flat and B natural are the same sound, right, and harmonic, E sharp, hmm, can't get that either. Let's put that E up anyway. F natural, great. G sharp, we can get A flat, and that's an enharmonic, right? G and A, they're gonna... Okay, so what could we do? Let's use again that idea of stopping some of the strings. So what did we find that we couldn't get? We couldn't get the C flat, so we'd like to stop our Cs, and we couldn't get the E sharp. Maybe we'd like to start, stop the E's. So we could maybe even hold this position, this C, E, C, E. Again, we don't have to be able to play it, we just have to stop those strings. And then maybe we could potentially even use our fingernails on the down, right? Um, or just... One, two, three, one, two, three. Or... That's very Spanish, right? So that, I think... Sounds a lot better than that, right? To stop those sounds a lot better. Um, so just being aware of that ability to stop strings to maybe get this effect that we would like to get by with the with the enharmonics on the pedal harp. This final gliss, it doesn't. It's not very clearly indicated, but um, I believe that should be the same setting we've just had. So again, maybe we do. We can start as low as here, right? Uh, yes, as low as this F. Those are all, you know, again, we don't want to go up to the C and we don't want to go down to the E because those are the ones we don't want sounding, but the rest are okay. So we can't maybe go quite um, as high. I guess it's actually supposed to start on the G. Right? We can't quite go as high as it would indicate, but we can, we can do a pretty good approximation there. Great. Um, well, let's talk just briefly here about uh, the fifth movement. 
So here again, um, okay, so we're in the key of A. Let's go ahead and do that. Should be everything. So you'll notice we don't need a D sharp. So we, okay, we're still okay. We could, if we want to tune our Ds to D flat for that earlier, that earlier glyphs, we could do so, right? Um, we're not needing D sharp here at this point. So let's look at the second page of, of the Fandango. Oh, this is page five, I think. Um, this actually is probably the hardest part in the piece for the harp. Uh, potentially faster than that. Um, so as written, right, we're supposed to be up here. Oh. I don't have that higher note, right? It goes all the way up to the E up here, which is gonna be a pretty rare lever harp that has that. So we have to make a judgment call again. Do we just leave this out? It's, it's kind of an important part. It's a bit of a solo and we could just play the left hand, but I think if we ignore the eight VAs in the right hand, we can actually play it again, assuming we can go up to this A, right? Um, and even if we can't, Let's see. It sounds kind of bad. Hard to go down here. Maybe we can just go this. So again, we could say, okay, if we can't go, Maybe we have 33 strings, we're missing that A. Ah, this piece just needs that A. Um, we could go A, E. I think that's a reasonable, right? We, we can tell by what the left hand's doing that this is just a big A chord. So A, E, that's part of an A chord. That sounds okay to my ear, that fits in. Um, and I think this, sorry. I think in that register, it sounds okay, right? That's, and that's the best we can do. And hopefully the conductor understands, right? And, and it's just, we try and do what we can to bring across this essence of what we understand the composer to intend um, while at the same time doing what we can to adapt to what our instrument can do. This next section is actually in C sharp, uh, in the sense that when we're playing it, we're, we're playing it with uh, seven sharps. There, there's a bunch there's these extra accidentals um, for sharp, um, for additional sharps. C sharp is the enharmonic equivalent of D flat, um, which is another key that we couldn't get unless we tuned our Gs down to G flat when they were down and ah, we need a G sharp here in this section, ah, it becomes a, a, a big headache. And okay, so this like this first note, right? Let's say even if we just tried to play the top line in the right hand, E sharp is F natural, we have to put our F down. Though actually maybe we could have had it down ahead of time, I think we could. Uh, D sharp, we can get a D sharp, we can also get an E flat, let's get a D sharp. Oh, F sharp again, I mean F sharp now, so F, F natural. potentially play that tune. Is it worthwhile? I'm not sure, right? Is that the essence? Is that the best thing that we can add there? Maybe instead we can bring that G octave up and play a bunch of G sharps. So again, trying to, and then when we get all this, well, maybe we can't play that E sharp, but maybe we can go and one of these would be potentially playable. might just leave this whole section out entirely. And again, you can kind of go through, okay, could we do this enharmonically? 
right that opening chord uh right as we say f natural c e and then okay now we need a like a b flat is the equivalent of our a sharp uh a C natural is equivalent to our C sharp, and we need this back, so. Right, so that is that chord, but oh, a lot of, a lot of um, changing levers. Again, sometimes you'll go through and you'll discover that actually by a, judi a judicious, judicious use of enharmonics, you're able to actually play it as written, maybe even, or do a lot of it. And other times it maybe it's just, Maybe you end up having to leave it out. Again, the orchestra's chugging along here. Um, so doing what you can. And certainly we could do this left hand. Get to the last page. We get a, this top section is fine. Just just put it in the key of F, I believe. Um, write this. Uh, yeah, something like that. And then back in A. I do want to talk about this little ending bit because we get this little glyphs going up. And again, this is a, I don't know why I wouldn't necessarily call it a solo, but it is, it is as a nice part in the orchestra. And again, we would want to go beep, beep to this high E, but we don't have it. So we'll just maybe ignore the 8VA. Oh, sorry, one more. Um, and I think I think that works. I think that works. So hopefully that gives you some some potential tools and some ideas in terms of adapting stuff that was written for the pedal harp and playing an orchestra. And again, keep in mind, do what you can, right? Do what you can. Do the best you can. Grab some notes. Try and get the essence. Try and just get what seems to be the idea as much as possible. And don't worry about don't worry about leaving out large swaths. Don't worry, you know, if you got an immediate key change, that might just be impossible. But be aware of enharmonics, and uh, do the best you can. So hopefully that was useful, and um, I'll see you next week because uh, I'm celebrating my, my patrons uh, two uh, a month of Harp Tuesdays this month. So I'll see you next next Tuesday. Cheers. <laughs>